Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, today's podcast, we're going to talk about seven reasons why you should talk to others about your programming. Yeah, let's get to talking. Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And so today, like as we said earlier, we're going to cover seven reasons why you should talk to others about your programming. Now, again, to be clear, we're not saying necessarily talk to other expert programmers, although the first point, that's going to be one of the things, is talking to just other people about your programming, right? Because uh, there's lots of reasons here, seven that we have. Uh, the first one, you know, just talking to other people. So like when I talk to Jackie or people like Tank or Raptor X or Major, um, these are all people that are above my level, definitely, you know, and yet at this, I, I can usually follow a lot of the concepts, but often... I'll be like, well, you do, you did what? You know, and I learned little, you know, things that I, I wouldn't have learned on my own because they're tackling, you know, different things and they're, they're at a higher, what's a, you know, punching above my weight kind of thing where I can go, wait a minute, what are you doing here? And, and they can take, often take a little bit of time there and explain it to me. And it's a great way to level up. It's one of the best ways to level up is to, see someone else doing something and have them to be able to educate you on what they're doing or just to you're, you get stuck on something. Like I remember the one with Mace with, I was trying to dedupe my email address and he's like, well, just put it as the key in an object. And then, you know, you can shove them all in there and it just does it automatically. And I'm like, simplest thing in the world yet. I never would have come to that solution on my own. So it's a great way to, 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 to do better. Yeah, absolutely. Talking to expert programmers, and it can be all kinds of people from within the community or whatever programming language we're in. They, they might even be um, programmers in other languages or um, studying other things. But yeah, yeah, it, it's a great way to really get that extra push. Just letting them see your code, letting them uh, hear about your issues and having them bounce off uh, whatever they think might be um, improvable and stuff like that. So, yeah, absolutely. I'd say also talking with expert users, just people who are not necessarily expert programmers in other languages or in the current one, but if they're very used to using the same language as you or the same programs with you or whatever, it could be Ryan Wells, the Russo, Dimitri, Dale, all kinds of different users. But just talking to them, having them bounce off whatever they see and have them maybe ask questions to why you did the things you did the way you did can also help you quite a lot. Yeah, and, and I'll add that even asking what they've been up to and looking what they've done. And it can be very inspiring, right? Just watching other people and going, oh, you know, I never thought about doing something like that. And uh, again, they don't have to be experts or it could be either from experts or not experts, but just people kind of in the same category of us as like they're developing code. Um, it can be great ways to, to come up with new things that we just wouldn't have thought of. And so it's just exposing yourself to other people. Um, so on the, the third point, would be, why, why is that? Well, it's because we all think differently, right? And we come up with different ways of doing stuff. And it's it's just a, I remember, you know, I'm sure most of us have been at like some sort of a large meeting and they'll ask, you know, um, each, you know, who can come up with the most, let's say, car manufacturers, whatever it is. Then they pick a topic and say, who can come up with the most? Um, and then they say, okay, now everyone, you know, come up with them and some people will get seven or 10 or something. But they'll say, now, how about let's look at everyone at your table? How many were there in total from that table? And it's a lot more. And that's usually because we just, we think differently. We have different experiences and learn things differently. So it's it's a, one of the big reasons why we should talk to other people. Yeah, I'd say even, even with our webinars and, and these uh, um, second hour uh, things we have had for years now, where people get to either ask about their thing or uh, show whatever they've done, um, I've seen from very small, minute things to very large th thing, things that people do totally different than how, how I would have done it. And in most cases, or maybe that's because I remember those, but when they've then done it in less code or 
faster or in a more simple way. So, yeah, yeah. We think very differently, and that's that's a great thing. And in case in point, <clears throat> last week, we, you know, when Jean got on, you, me, you, and Jean were just talking through something. I'm like, you know, we need to set, uh, like, maybe every quarter where we get on and talk about what we've been doing because we realized we were all, each of us were doing some of the things, but very differently. And it was just really good to talk through how we're, hey, I use this tool, I'm doing it this way. Oh, you're using that one, I'm doing it that way, right? And it was like, oh, you know what? It's, it isn't, we would always borrow from each other, but it's just, uh, you know, it's greater to have, it's great to have the options, right? All the things out there. Yeah, and it is the fourth point why we have different needs, different uses. So, so we might be doing the same thing. We might be, filling a list we might be scraping a site we might be doing different types but because we needed either in a different pace or some needed in real time so don't just need it all in bulk and need to uh, do so all of this uh, makes us enter the, the task differently mentally so yeah just having those different needs or hearing others needs uh, might give you uh, good insights. Yeah, and actually, let me follow up on that because it's it's one of the funniest things I, I listen to um, to Dan Kennedy, but I read him in his books and watch him in his videos. And uh, apparently, it's a big thing that um, at businesses they'll they'll say, "Oh, well, you can't help me. My business is different." And he's like, "You understand? All they're all the same. Like in reality, everyone can use what we do." Now, you have to take a little bit of work to figure out how we can apply. You know what we're doing to you. But it's still, it's everyone thinks they're different, that, that there's no overlap. But it's like there's so much more overlap if you use your imagination and see and pick out, you know, how people are doing stuff and go, you know what? I actually am doing something similar to that. I'm doing it this way. And now I can see in my brain how I can borrow in some way what they've done and apply it to what I'm doing. And the, the problem is often will people will see something and go, oh, I'm not, I don't do something with that. I don't use classes. I don't, I don't do it. Well, that, the classes, it's irrelevant, right? It's, you know, it's more about the whole actions of what you're doing and, and how you're either, how you're, there's so many different ways you can look at it, right? Often you really are doing, you could leverage learning from the other person, just pull your head out of, you know, being focused on what it, the one thing you thought it was and listen, get the general concepts, right? That, that's mm -hmm. a much better approach. Um, and, and yeah, we, this is the other great thing. And this is, this is why, you know, I, I, I am very humble and I know I'm not a advanced programmer, right. And I'm okay with that because I don't really spend a lot of time learning how to code. Uh, but that's why I have friends like Jackie and Maestrieth and Raptor X and stuff. Um, I, I focus on a lot of other stuff and um, there's, you know, a lot of people get either embarrassed. You know, I was always in college. I was all everywhere. I was always the question asker. Right. I'm just fearless because I don't care. Like, I don't care that I don't know how to do something. I want to learn. So I'll ask people like, what about this? What about that? Um, I have no guilt or, or, you know, feeling of people are going to think less of me because I don't know how to do something because we all don't know. We all start at the same spot, right? From scratch. We just yeah, have different exactly. backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. I just today we, I picked up my son from, um, uh, after school activities and, and he, we had set the goal of learning how to tie your own two shoelace. And so we went home and he was like, when I picked him up, Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Today I'm learning how to tie my own shoelace. I was like, but I don't want to learn that. I was like, you, but you need to learn it. You've just gotten shoes with shoelaces and you can't keep uh, <laughs> awesome. have, using other types of shoes. But he was, he was very reluctant to learn it. But as soon as we talked through that he has learned everything else that he knows, right? He's learned how to walk. He's learned how to talk. He's learned how to do math and stuff like that. He was like, Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Okay. So let's learn this. And, and he learned it. It was great. Um, and was so happy. And it was just the idea of him being like, I don't want to learn something. And then realizing, though, oh, everything I know I've actually learned. Okay. I found it to be a funny experience for him to say he didn't want to learn. 
Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Jackie, I hadn't thought about it, but you're spot on. And my son, he you know, he's older than, than yours, but he uh, he doesn't like new things. And he will definitely, I mean, it's so hard to get him to, other than food, because he knows with us, you got to take a bite. You can take one bite and then that's it. And But if it's the next night we have leftovers, you're still taking another bite of that thing. But it's one bite, you know, and, and he's he's a total go-getter on that one. But with other things, any sort of like experience, he he will choose not to do it. I almost have to force him. I'm like, remember this? Remember how you didn't want to do that? And then finally, I finally got you to do it. And then you loved it, you know. But it's it is people, you know, especially kids can't see past that. But I think you're you're spot on too. It's all humans, right? We don't like the unknown. It's uncertain, and and we might no one likes the uncomfortableness of not knowing what you're doing, and so we try to avoid that. But I mean, it's very good to to get out there and try new things and dabble. But and the thing is, don't don't be afraid. And the other one is this is a key one. This is one of my favorite things. Like, don't don't ever worry about failure. Failure as long as it's viewed as like an experiment, as a test, and you're learning, it's not a failure, right? I mean, no one expects to be perfect on the first time, right? So just just keep trying. And you know, only the what was this? I think it was like Einstein or someone said the only fa- people that are failures are the ones that stop trying. Yeah, like yeah I, I don't remember who said that, but I have heard that one as well. And I've I'm recently been looking at some do it yourself videos and stuff like that. And one of them has this cash phrase logo that he always ends his videos with, and that's go make stuff, right? It, it's like, uh, and he talks about it in his videos that it doesn't matter. And, and he has been doing stuff professionally with props and all that science of stuff for years. And it doesn't really matter if that mm, foam hand is perfect. Do all the knuckles measure up to all the rest of the knuckles? That's the, no, just make a hand, right? Do that and then get better at it the next time and the next time. But as long as you just do stuff, so yeah, I, I just love his way of putting that. Well, so. we need, we'll need to come up on for us because with coding, it's the same way, right? Don't don't stress so much about having the most optimized, most perfect thing, right? Get it to work, and over time, you'll Im- improve it. Yeah, we've both done that for years, and uh, we we have a point more here with uh, when you troubleshoot your stuff. Um, stuff like, yeah, you know, talking to a bobblehead, uh, can, can help or talking to someone. It might even be a colleague or your wife or who knows your dog. It, it could be almost anybody. As long as you try to explain what the code is doing. I had maybe been coding in our hard key for three months or something when I had that eureka moment where I was like, I'd been struggling with getting an object thingy to work for, I don't remember, but maybe hours. And my colleague, he came over and said, what is it? Because I was apparently getting a bit irritated or whatever. And I tried to explain it to him. He didn't know coding. He just asked. Yeah. And before I had explained half of it, I'd found the issue yeah. just because that extra pair of eyes of me trying to step through it for someone who didn't right. know it um, made it all uh, much more clear to me. So that's that's a great method. Try and explain your code to someone else. Yeah, the other one I would add on to this was the 8th d uh, it is more applicable, I think, to GUIs than anything. But and, and the other day, which sometime Jackie, you and I, we got to we got to work on app sheet. Um, I'm really glad you mentioned that to me the the other day. It, uh, it's it's pretty impressive, but it is quite confusing to when you try to actually build your app. Uh, but I built one in a few minutes. Anyway, I was trying to create one for my friend, and I was having a lot of pro. I just couldn't get it to load, do what I wanted to, and then I finally did what I always tell everyone with statistics, my background is with statistics, right? Is I would tell people, you know, they want, they were trying to come up with a certain kind of graph. They, they're trying to get the data the right way. And I said, well, just 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 get a piece of paper and draw the graph. Just draw it with the data, but just draw it by hand. And once you do that, then I can help you with, you know, how to come up with it. But until you can draw it, I can't do anything because you're just, you, it's so mayhem. And so with the app sheet, that's what I, I, once I drew it out, I'm like, 
oh, you know, now it made so much more sense to me of what I was doing. Um, so, yeah, and it, it's just a good practice to to have if you're doing any sort of a GUI. But I think also with, I guess I would get back to in the coding is the, um, what's it called? the uh, Where it's not programming, but you're writing the pseudocode. pseudocode. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. An outline. It's, it saves you so much time. And if you do that up front, yeah, and, yeah, exactly. And markups for GUIs or, uh, I don't know, plans for building, stuff like that. It, it just makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please, uh, you know, comment on here if you have a different thing you should do. And we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, let's hear from you.